Okay then, we have the DMX desk plugged in, we have the, uh, we have the lighting plugged in and you'll probably notice um, they're not doing anything. Well the reason is obviously I haven't started programming them yet. Now I've got them connected to the desk and um, they just simply won't do anything until I tell them what to do. Now if you remember I'd set um, the Dynatwin to scanner number one or channel number one so you probably can't see this because the camera's a bit far away but this top button here is to turn the control for scanner number one on and off. Number two I have set to the uh, to the two par cans there. Right, we need to create our first scene, our first page in that flip book, a static image of the way you want the lights to look. Firstly, we must press this program button until it's flashing, else you'll end up doing a lot of work and finding out you can't store it, as I just found about half an hour ago when doing the first take on this video. After a bit of swearing to myself and kicking of doors, I have uh, discovered the reason why nothing's stored and it is because I'd neglected to press said button. So I'm going to press that now until it's flashing. That's flashing away, which is all good. What we do, I want to set the Dyna Twins up first, or the Dyna Twin rather, to the way I want it to look. I press scanner number one, the LED illuminates. The faders now, these eight faders, are now controlling aspects of the Dyna Twin. Firstly, um, fader number one is controlling the pan of the mirror as you're looking at it on the left hand side. That's the pan control if you can see that moving around. Fader number two is for the tilt of the same mirror. Fader number three is controlling the amount of strobing or non-strobing or wobble if you can see it there. Uh, for this first scene I don't want any of that, I'm just going to put it straight to the top so it's uh, a solid beam. The fourth fader will control the gobo that's coming from uh, the, uh, the lamp underneath the, uh, the first uh, mirror on the left hand side. So I'm going to go for that particular effect there. Now that's that mirror set up. The next four faders basically emulate the first four faders but they control the uh, mirror on the right hand side so again pan for that mirror right hand side mirror tilt for it so I've got it to there strobing on fade number seven I don't want strobing I've taken it to the top and I want a similar gobo or the same gobo uh, on that side as well so I'll just move fade number eight to find that gobo I think I've just passed it. Ooh. No one here. Where are we? There we are. So now I have um, both of the mirrors set up the way I want them in the first scene. So that's the Dyna Twin essentially done with for this first scene. So what I do now is I press button number one again on the scanners. That turns off the control. Uh, for the Dyna Twin I can mess around with the faders now and it will do nothing, it will just sit there as I've set it up. Okay, now the par cans, I'll, to control them I need to press scanner button number two. Right, for the uh, purpose of this demo I've set the par cans to just have three elements of control using the first three faders. You can actually with these lights set it to, uh, so you can use six faders or seven faders um, to give you more control over them, i.e. like strobing etc. But I'm not too bothered about that because I'll be here all night trying to show you that. So with the par cans as, as they are now, I'm just going to be using these three. First one is going to give me the red colour. The further up I push it, the brighter and the more intense it becomes. Uh, fade number two is for green. Same again, further up you push it, brighter it becomes. And uh, fade number number three there that's for your blue of course you can have any combination of those three colors and I'm just gonna do one at random I'm gonna stick with that that's what I want that's the way I want my first scene now to look the first page in that flip book right so I need to store that 
and like I say it's going to be stored and we're going to, it's called a scene. I'm going to make this scene number one. I then press record button, yeah? And then I want to press the uh, scene number I want it to be, number one. Everything should now theoretically flash all the LEDs to confirm that it's been stored. There we go. So now, like I said, that is the first scene. Now what I want to do is create the second scene. Okay, so I go back again. I've turned off control for the par cans, so they're just going to sit there like so. Faders back to zero. Press um, scanner number one button. It illuminates. I'm now back in control of my Dyna scan and my Dyna twin even. Um, I want the mirror there. I'm going to have a bit of strobing. I think on this one. I'm going to change. In fact, I'm going to have white strobing. I have it like that. I'm going to set my second side up now. I have the mirror there. Tilt it up a bit. I'm going to have that on a similar strobe level. And I'm actually going to set the go over to white again. So I've got them going like such. I'm done with that scanner again. Turn off control for it. Turn on control for the par cans. Uh, Park hands, I'm going to have a simple red for this one. Now that's my second scene. So now, again, I just repeat the process. I press record button, I press scene two, it all flashes to say confirmed. Right, now, I'm not going to, I've got to cut this video down basically. I'm going to create a load more scenes in here. When I have done, I'm going to turn the camera back on, I'm going to show you how to string those scenes together to uh, create a se uh, sequence uh, of patterns using these lights. Okay, so I've programmed a few more scenes into the desk using the lights. Uh, I'll just show you what I've done. I'll just press the blackout button there. Uh, scene one, we did that together. Scene two, we also did that one together. I've put in scene three, scene four, scene five, scene six, scene seven, and scene 8. I've only done 8 scenes. You can actually do up to 240 using the desk, uh, this particular model, the uh, Chauvet DMX55. Uh, now that's a hell of a lot of scenes. Um, I haven't got to the rest of the year to sit here and program all that, just for the benefit of the uh, video, but you get the general idea. You just keep repeating the process that I've already showed you we need to string it together. We need to create what they call a chase, which is the effect you get, like I showed you before, when you're flicking through the corner pages, that little flick, but we need to put a sequence of lights together. So how do we do that? Well, here's how we do it. We start off and we press the program button again till it flashes as such. We then press the chase button that we're interested in. Now this is chase one, it's the first one we've done. So we'll press that. Then what we do is select the scene to insert. So we want scene one in there. I then just press the record button again. Flashes to acknowledge scene two in there, we want that. Press record again. Scene three, yeah. Scene four, yeah. Scene five, yeah. Scene six, yeah. And so on and so forth. Right, I'll just black it out again. Right, I need to now show you how to play back that chase so we can uh, see the uh, the product of our work. Okay, so here's how we do that. First of all, we take it out of blackout mode. Quite simply, we press chase one. Nothing's happening, why is nothing happening? Because I haven't told the DMX desk uh, how I would like it to cycle through those uh, particular scenes. If I don't want to use sound to light, I can just press auto. So if we've got no music on, for whatever reason you might not have music on, um, speeches etc, so you're just using a bit of mood lighting. Um, I've set it to auto now. So this fader here actually controls the speed in which it will cycle whoop, a bit faster through the scenes. There we go. So it's going through scenes one to eight. Oh, you know, I can speed that up, etc. There we are. 
and that's great. Now just bear in mind that's just one chase.